So you'll notice as you read 1 John, you get to chapter 4, and he starts specifically talking about, as he says, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone into the world, but this you will know, by this you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist which you have heard is coming and which is already in the world. So the, the chapter goes on to talk about Antichrist, how they came uh, from us, but they were not of us. They went out from us, but they were not of us, otherwise they would have abided with us. So it's saying that, talking mainly about Simon the sorcerer from Acts 8 and how he went to uh, deceive, and he was basically known as the father of heresies. He was like the first false Christ, and he is credited with the doctrine of Gnosticism. So we have to, what I'm going to do is, I had a, a Facebook friend, and he's kind of into Torah and Hebrew roots, and he was saying he didn't like how uh, the early church, early Christianity, has, has was infiltrated with uh, this Gnosticism. Um so I'm going to set about to try and prove that that wasn't correct. That wasn't a correct conclusion to come to. We're going to look at how the early church did have the opponents who were the sorcerers, the Gnostics, and how they wrote the uh, scriptures of the New Testament in a context to oppose them. So this one particularly, 1 John chapter 4, is specifically against Gnosticism, uh, and, and uh, particularly the uh, heresiarch Serinthus. So this uh, heterodox is called uh, Docetism. So Docetism is the doctrine of the Docetes that Jesus only appeared to have a physical body and was ultimately of celestial substance. Okay, This is a Gnostic belief. Docetism is kind of like a proto-Gnostic uh, belief. Uh, they kind of believe that, you know, if God did come down, that he wasn't going to uh, take on the flesh of humans. So they, they kind of credit this to like it was a, an illusion, it was a phantom, as it says here, the heterodox doctrine, that the phenomenon of Jesus, his bodily existence, and above all the human form of Jesus, was mere semblance without any true reality. Broadly, it is taken as the belief that Jesus only seemed to be human and that his human form was an, an illusion. Okay, It was a kind of like a phantom, as it says there, above an, an apparition of phantom. Okay, so we know that the way the gospel is written, that that isn't true. Uh, and even after the resurrection, again, wasn't true. He came in the flesh, was crucified in the flesh, and he was raised from the dead, and he came and proved um, that he was flesh by saying, feel the wounds from the cross. So this, this, this is going to be cited as the first difference between the, do the uh, doctrine of Serinthus, uh, the docetic, docetic Gnostic heresy, and what the early church, the Christians, had in their doctrine. Okay, so Serinthus was an early Gnostic who was prominent. Uh, he was basically uh, the opponent of John the Apostle because, as I've said before, like. Uh, God is one, and then afterwards, after God, we have pairs. So everything is paired, like you have the night and day. You have uh, love and hate. Okay, everything has pairs. And even with uh, the patriarchs, uh, they are also split into pairs. So you had Simon Peter, and you had Simon the Sorcerer. So it seems like Serinthus is the opposite contradicting pair to John the Apostle. So I've highlighted here again, he did denied that the Supreme God made the physical world. So this is the second heresy of proto-Gnosticism of Serinthus. He also said that uh, Christ descended upon Jesus at baptism and guided him in ministry and performing miracles, but left him at the crucifixion. Similarly to the Ebionites, he maintained that Jesus was not born of a virgin, but was a mere man a biological son of Mary and Joseph. So they say that Joseph was his fleshly father, and that's what the the schism, the her heretical schism, the Ebionites also denied the virgin birth. Early Christian tradition describes Serinthus as a contemporary to an opponent of John the Evangelist. 
And again, as we've just ascertained, he writes the first and second epistle of John to warn about the doctrine and changes Serinthus was making to the original gospel. According to early Christian sources, John wrote his gospel specifically to refute the teachings of Serinthus. So, uh, again, we can see here that uh, Gnosticism did not infiltrate early Christianity, but the, the early Christians and the apostles were opposed to the Gnostics and were quite clear in, in making distinctions between um, the two. Irenaeus writes that Serinthus was educated in the Gnosis of the Egyptians. Again, similar to Simon the Sorcerer, he went to Alexandria and learnt the sorcery of um, the Alexandrian mystery schools, uh, which basically the tradition was there from one of the first sorcerers, Hermes Trismegistus. According to Epiphanes, uh, Serinthus was the instigator of trouble against the apostles Paul and Peter at Jerusalem and had sent men uh, to Antioch commanding that Gentile converts must be circumcised and keep the law. So this is really interesting. If we read Acts 15, it says in certain of the party of the Pharisees who believed. He'll say that. Certain of the party of the Pharisees who believed. So if this is true that Serinthus sent them out, it must mean that they've left the Pharisees and gone over to the uh, schism of Serinthus and the proto-Gnostics um, obviously not maybe not joining the Christian church because maybe they, they wanted to uh, keep the law as it was saying in Acts 15 that they, they preached about keeping the law of Moses so this is what I'm coming to my next point really which is important about how these schisms um, had their own distinct differences and again the Ebionites are quite important as like an early heretical sect who they accepted Christ as like a messiah but they denied the virgin birth and they also um, preached that they you must keep the law so again as we know it prompted the first council of Jerusalem which is again Acts 15 after these things Epiphanes says that Serinthus founded a school in the Roman province of Asia Minor which at its height spread into the province of Galatia According to Galatian tradition, Paul wrote his epistle to the Galatians against Serinthus's followers who were troubling the church. So this would seem to show that um, these believing Pharisees maybe left the Pharisees and went to uh, follow or be disciples of Serinthus. In Asia, early Christian writers identify Serinthus uh, again, as an adversary, according to Irenaeus, his teacher Polycarp, uh, himself a student of John, told the story that John rushed out of a bathhouse at Ephesus without bathing when he found out Serinthus was inside, exclaiming, let us fly, lest even the bathhouse fall down, because Serinthus, the enemy of the truth, is inside. Irenaeus, Irenaeus also relates that John sought by proclamation of his gospel to remove that error which by Serinthus had been disseminating among men. So again, what's interesting is we're seeing, we're seeing the, the early heresy, the, the first Antichrist, Antichrist in his infancy, you know, would have been two men, Simon, Simon the Sorcerer and Serinthus, and they would have been gathering men into their heresies. Serinthus utilised the gospel identified to that of the Ebionites. Gospel of the Ebionites, which the early church fathers identify as an unorthodox version of Matthew. Um, so again, we can see that this Gospel of the Ebionites, which is actually lost, uh, we have some quotations. Uh, Epiphanes incorrectly entitles this the Hebrew Gospel. We know it's not the Gospel to the Hebrews because we did the breakdown on it. Uh, the Gospel to the Hebrews, <clears throat> there's about six main fragments, but the Gospel to the Ebionites is different. Uh, and we're going to look at now exactly why that is uh, from what we know about it. Um, it says, although Irenaeus, late in the 2nd century, attests to the existence of his gospel, 
we are dependent solely upon quotations given by Epiphanus as to the contents of the text. But it says, uh, like from the top, that the, des the designation customary today is based on the fact that this gospel, probably used by the Ebionites, a group of Greek-speaking Jewish Christians who were prominent throughout the 2nd and the 3rd centuries. Um, so, again, we can see that they have a difference. They have a different view. They don't want to join the Church of Jerusalem, for example, where they would have uh, been based, or they were in Judea, you know, other sects maybe in Judea. They don't want to join a Christian church because uh, they believe in keeping the law and we'll find out next that they are actually strict vegetarians. And so this 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 flies in the face of the teachings of the Apostle Paul. Um, as we see here, the gospel of the, the gospel of the Ebionites omit, omits the infancy narratives. The gospel presents both John the Baptist and Jesus as vegetarians. And Jesus says that he has come to abolish sacrifices. So, yeah, he did do that, but that wasn't so that we could be, uh, like, vegetarian. Is that like, you know, stop killing animals and convert to being vegetarians? It's like you can completely distort the, the context within which, the, you know, Jesus would say, you know, we, we need to put an end to like, the animal sacrificing of the Jews. So Cameron says, together with the sayings about the Passover, uh, this intimates a polemic against the Jewish temple. This indicates that the Gospel of the Ebionites addresses the issue of Jewish identity after the destruction of the temple. The solution offered to the problem is to believe in Jesus, the true interpreter of the law. See, interesting how that's exactly like Hebrew roots. They take Jesus, uh, they take the Jesus, the real Jesus, and distort him into like a Judaizing Torah Jesus who's going to show you how to keep the law. Completely wrong. It's like he's like he's going to be like top Pharisee, chief priest of the Hebrew roots. Quite crazy. But it shows that, you know, this is not a new way of thinking. The devil has these um, heresies from right when the apostles were in Jerusalem. So Sorinthus taught that the visible world and heavens were not made by the supreme being, but a lesser power, Demiurge distinct from him he taught that this power was ignorant of the of the existence of the supreme god this is um, typical gnosticism completely different to christianity and we'll find out why in the next paragraph his use of the term demiurge literary craftsman for creator fits, fits platonic uh, neo-pythagorean middle platonic and neo-platonic schools of philosophy so Apart from the Neo-Pythagorean, which is Pythagoras, it's Plato, uh, Plato, Plato and Pythagoras, the Greek philosophers, it was their train of thought about how things worked. Uh, these ideas uh, dominated the learned environment of the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, unlike true Gnostics that followed him, Serinthus taught that the Demiurge was not evil, more like Plato's Logos than the egotistical Demiurge taught by Valentinus. Valentinus. Valentia, Valentinus, whatever. Very uh, prominent uh, writers of these uh, schisms at the time of <clears throat> the first century. So, um, you know, the Gnostics were Platonists. That's the that's basically the root of, of their ideology. That they they I mean, in the Nagamadi, there were uh, some excerpts from. Uh, the Republic, which was written by Plato, but it's interesting to point out that the Nag Hammadi Library, uh, they they think that it was a sect called Sethians who owned those scriptures. So you know, I could probably get around to doing another study on on that. That's a, that's kind of you know another aspect of this. So Jesus, uh, sorry, Serinthus distinguished between the man Jesus and the Christ. He denied the supernatural virgin birth of Jesus making him the biological son of Joseph and Mary. He taught that the Christ descended upon him in the form of a dove from the supreme ruler at baptism. We'll see also adoptionism. Left him again after his crucifixion, never to embody the flesh. This is kind of docetic. See, in the, in the docetic belief, they, they believe, they don't believe that uh, 
Jesus endured any kind of pain or suffering because his flesh was an illusion. So these are all kind of interesting, uh, important points to note about doctrine. Serinthus is also said to have taught that Jesus will be raised from the dead at the last day when all when all men will rise with him. That's completely completely false, isn't it? We know Christ was raised from the dead three days after the crucifixion. So again, all these errors um, are totally different to what the apostles taught. There was no uh, fusion between Christianity and Gnosticism. In describing Jesus as a natural born man, Serinthus agreed with the Ebionites in portraying Christ as a spirit that came from heaven, undertook its divine task in the material world and then returned. He anticipates the fully developed Christian Gnosticism in later decades. Irenaeus numbers Serinthus among those Gnostics who denied that Jesus is the Logos word. So, again, um, lots of different uh, heretical schisms arriving from, um, you know, the publication of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, uh, what people uh, interpreted and what they wanted to believe rather than, you know, submitting themselves to the faith. Completely different thing. If you come to a different conclusion, that isn't Christianity. Um, Serinthus instructed his followers to maintain strict adherence to both written and oral Torah Mosaic law for the attainment of salvation wow I mean again flies in the face of Paul because Paul says if righteousness comes by the law then Christ is dead in vain so all of these um, heretical uh, doctrines that the heretics invented are, you know, they're all completely opposed to the truth. Um, you know, the devil's a liar and we know that the truth sets us free. So the lies are designed to bring you into bonds. That's always what the false teacher wants to do to capture you and bind you so that you don't have the liberty of the gospel. So it's important to study these um Heretics, what they taught and why they uh, contradict Christianity. And also it's interesting how we see these things in modern day heresies. And especially now on social media, we can see, you know, the kind of trends that are going around. Uh, what people are doing, you know, they're, they're leaving the apostate Christian churches because they were made apostate by the Jesuits. And they can see that apostasy and then they backslide into Torah Hebrew roots. So, you know. We'll do some more videos on the early heretics and schisms and leave a comment and likes in uh, just in below.